maybe your just proportions are fucked up. Proportions that, that make me look strapping in a t-shirt? I don't know if that's fucked up. No, proportions that make you look like you're wearing a crop top. Crop top? You think I have a longer torso than lower body? No, you, no, do, no, do no. You think, I, I think you have short upper body. But that wouldn't mean a crop top. A crop top is cuts me off in the middle. Yeah, but you wear smaller sizes that are tighter on you rather than the large because it's going to be too big on you. I, may, I wear a tighter size because I want my arms to look big. No, it's because the bigger size looks too big on you. No, no, no. It feels good, but it's not. It doesn't looks wrap. Like, doesn't like wrap around my pythons. Looks like you're swimming. No, no. This is how you're supposed to wear. I just not, I'm not tight with my hoodies, you know. And my t-shirts are naturally tight because I'm massive. Are, are you also not wearing a shirt under that? No, it's. I'm not wearing a shirt. Should I? Why? Probably. Why? Because it's a sweater, and you wear. This isn't a sweater. It's a crew neck. It's a, a crew neck sweater. Stop right now. Stop it. That's what they're called. Crew neck sweaters. This is a crew neck sweatshirt. Sweater. This is not sweater material. This is a sweatshirt. No, it's a it's a sweater style. It's a crew neck style sweater. Yo, dude, you could not be more wrong. Google like it. the ice. Google it. It's a sweatshirt. Are we, Are we recording? Yes. Oh, thank God. It's a sweatshirt. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode no, of Hey Man. No, 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 no. I'm Jacob no, Wolf. No, this is no, no. This is the old man Josh. No. He there is a crew, crew neck. neck there a, is a crew neck sweater, which is a sweater material, and there's a crew neck sweater shirt. Sweater, yo, dude, this is gonna be great. Let's make a little bet. All of them that look like that are crew neck sweaters. This is here's the do thing. You know I, what a sweater is? Here's the thing. I only call these crew neck sweaters, but I call them crew necks. I just don't call them crew neck sweaters because they're crew necks. But one's a but, crew neck sweater and one's a crew neck sweatshirt. No, no, no. One's one is just a crew neck sweater and one is a sweater. Yo, dude, are you? I'm not trolling you. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I am not trolling you. Crew neck sweater, and then the ones you know, like the 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 sweater ones that I have, like the the white, the navy Yo, blue. The... Who raised you? You dummy. <laughs> yeah, but I did not raise you to think, Matt. What is this? But, what is this? Yeah, <laughs> a shirt. Yo, yeah. When, when, our... when we go to London, though, everyone's not going to call that a crew neck sweater or a sweatshirt. They're, you know what they're going to call it? A jumper. Yeah, dude, but we're not in London. We're in the Las Vegas, where they call the it Las a, Vegas, where they call it a crew neck sweater. sweatshirt, sweater, sweater. <laughs> the best time to wear a striped sweater shirt is all the time. All right, listen, dude. <laughs> hey everybody, I can't wait for you guys to chime in on this. Uh, this is hey man, sweater, sweatshirt, or sweater. <laughs> Uh, is hey man, uh, I'm Josh. Oh, if you fucking just say your fucking name. God damn. <laughs> I'm Jacob. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I was going to be low energy today, so I'm just doing things to annoy him to start it. You quick. look super glassy eyed. I'm tired. You're not high? No, I got up at like, I got up literally when you texted me, I got yeah. up at that text pretty much. Okay. Um, guys, um, we're going to, um, we got a lot of things to talk about today. I want to get business out of the way. First of all, I, I want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who listens to this podcast, who shares this podcast, who comments on the clips. We're having such a great time. Um, don't forget to uh, subscribe, um, either on YouTube or on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you're watching or listening to this. Also comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Um, we are in San Jose this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Yep. Uh, we're super excited. I love performing there. Can't wait to be there. Um, and, and then um, we are in the UK and Europe, in Europe yep, and Dublin. Um, so check that out. We can't wait to get there and see all you guys. Um, I'm trying to think what else. We come back and it's New Year's Eve and we're doing like uh we're taking a bunch of november off but then we're hitting yeah. it hard hitting it hard in december but we are going to add a show in naples florida um i think probably the 14th and 15th of november it's right. a tuesday and wednesday um but wait wait we're going back to the place where that dude pulled a knife out of his arm sling we are going back to the place to where they the guy pulled the knife yeah 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 i hope he comes back man i don't you don't? No, I wasn't there for that one. He's lucky I wasn't there for that one. Why? What would you have done? We're Russian. Stabbed? Yeah, we're Russian. You know, we did Krav Maga. We could figure out. Nah, he dude. has he has one arm. He can't. He's got one arm. 
You know what's in the other arm? A knife. In his arm in a sling? <laughs> knife. No, I know, but then he only has that. He doesn't have his other arm. Yeah, but dude, if unless you know what you're doing, you're getting cut at least once. I mean, that's not All you I mean. have to do is take control of the one arm that yeah, he has. Yeah, the one arm with the knife. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's kind of, you think you can control not getting cut? Yes. No way. Yes. I, it's such a dude attitude. Absolutely. You are such a... He t- doesn't have two arms. He's got one in a sling. But one is real pointy, bro. Yeah, one of them. But uh, you, you, also you don't the, think you're uh, getting cut with a knife one time? No, nah, I've seen the video. The dude was... It was an older dude. We, uh, that's, what video? You didn't see the video of it? Oh, mom sent me a video that somebody had... That somebody from the club took. Oh, that's took. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the whole way we found out that he had a knife. Yeah, dude, but they... I knew he had a knife. No, oh, well, that, that I knew he had a knife. Uh, but now, by the way, the cameraman for that, you could tell was like, you know, you know, World back in the day when World Star was like really, really popular. Yeah. And it was like always like World Star fights and world and the kids who would record, excuse me, the kids who would record those videos were terrible cameramen. Yeah, the, the person for that video was a World Star cameraman. Person. Yeah, but dude, you didn't see, you just saw him on the ground. You didn't see. No, I saw him standing up. Uh, he went from standing up to being pushed outside to on the floor. And then the person went from the crowd was like filming the crowd and then you heard like a clink and then the dude just like you saw him he kind of like ran over and then like just had the knife on video and then it ended. It was I'm, like a really it was like a weird Blair Witch video. Definitely I can't wait to tell that story when we get back down there. Oh Jesus. He's one of my favorites dude. It was really you don't expect first of all who brings a knife to a comedy show. But you know what the thing about that guy he had bought everybody at the table he had bought all their drinks and food he was in such a good mood and then his ex-wife he came to the show with his ex-wife. See, that already said... Like, that's my first question. Why? Nobody because, asked him that night. What did he say? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think... Because by the time I asked him, I think he was already over the edge. And I think I was like, why... He was like, it's my ex-wife. I'm like, why did you... Why are you guys... Like, why did you guys come together? He goes, I have no fucking idea. And I was like, got it. Oh, dude, we're going to stay... I, there's a Naples Beach Grand Resort or some hotel like that. It's super dope. We're going to stay there. Is it on the beach? Uh, you can walk over to the beach for sure. And you can walk through like some, I don't even know how to call it, but I saw some uh, definite wildlife. Maybe we could do some fishing off the bridge. <sighs> say less. You don't got to tell me. We can go rent. We go rent a fishing pole. We'd have to buy a fishing license for the day too, though. Oh, yeah? They're like 20 bucks. I, would, I wouldn't mind doing that. Unless... Yeah, no, you need a fishing license in Florida, I think. I, I, I'm assuming you need one everywhere. Yes. Right? Correct. But I, I would definitely love to... All right, we'll do that. We'll be, in, we'll be in Naples, everybody. You know how much I like to fish. Yeah. So you don't got to tell me twice. And, and also, guys, uh, thank you to everybody who's been coming out to the Monday Night Show here in Vegas. It's growing every week. Mm-hmm. It's getting more fun and more fun. I got some great surprises coming up for the shows. Um... I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Uh, it's been so much fun. Dude, and I just got back from L.A. I was in L.A. last night. Yep. Uh, somebody told me they saw you in Hollywood, but then they were about to come say hi to you, and then you were gone. I don't know what why you were gone, but I think you must have hopped in a car or something. No, no, no. In Hollywood? Yeah. I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard to go to a smoke shop to buy a scale. Mm. I wonder for what? Uh, just to weigh my finger. Have you ever thought about how much your fingers weigh? Are you high right now? It's no. <laughs> <laughs> a pretty high question. What I'm not going to lie. What do you think weighs more? Okay. You ready for this? Sure. Two toes or one finger? Depends on the toes. Depends on the finger. All right. Because is, like, is it like big toe and middle toe? Is it two of my fucked up toes? Is it the thumb for my finger? Like, it, There's a lot of variables for that question. Yeah, I don't know why I'm asking you. You think this is a sweater, so I don't know why I'm asking you anything. Well, the, when you asked me, all my follow-ups were very valid questions. Yeah, I agree, but you also... Like, the big toe probably weighs more than any of the fingers. Yeah. Is your big toe shorter than your next toe over? Correct. Yeah. I wonder if mine is. I don't remember. Take a look. My, uh, my hammer toe is acting up, so I don't want to take this shoe off. Dude, just... Okay. I'm Listen. going to CVS afterwards because... No, don't. Stop going to CVS. It's just like a bandage. It comes back every time. Hey, what do you want me to do? Get it cut off? No, I want you to go to a doctor and get it drained. No, dude. Am I getting my fucking toe drained? Why not? Why would I? 
Because there might be something in there that keeps re getting agitated and growing if you drain it. Yeah, but if I go, to go and away. get the corn stuff from CVS, it goes away. Oh, Dude. oh, really? Does it? Because guess what? It's back. Yeah, well, it comes back, but it does go away. Right, right. Yo. But it's a small bandage. If you go and get it drained, it might fix it forever. Can I tell you? So last we talked here, I was going to see Gaga. True. Yes. I, I have to tell you how great that show was. She is maybe the best performer. Okay. So it was at it was at MGM Park MGM the theater there and I don't know how many people have its seats but it felt like maybe 5000 which for her is probably pretty small right Yeah and so and she was doing her jazz um and she so she had a full uh, orchestra behind her and then her band and um dude what is it oh dude just one of your really 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 let me really tell you something. gray hairs the she okay. As a performer, I could not bless you. As Thank a you, performer, sorry. I could not. I was blown away by forget she's girl, fucking great songs and and great voice, but I'm not like a I'm not out listening to Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett tunes. That's not what I'm into. That's not really my style of music. That's right. What she was singing. Um she, she made everybody there feel like she was singing directly to them. She made you feel like you were her best her best friend. It was such a warm, generous, loving, awesome feel in that auditorium. And she was her voice is perfect really good and she played a bunch of her hits on piano by herself rearranged them a little bit right and they were also look man if you can get 5,000 people and I bet you out of those 5,000 and there were some older people there because they were like oh this is like old school right 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 but I bet you out of those 5,000 and 5,000 is just a guess I bet you 90% of those people didn't listen to that type of music didn't listen don't earn into jazz so to captivate people like that is so fucking crazy and to make it feel so personal in such a huge space i was i was blown away it was a life changing as a performer a life changing night and i i do feel like one of my strong points as a performer although last night not so much last night i took some mushrooms and they usually make me real calm and it made me real uneasy on stage. Well, wait, last night was Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, in, in LA. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I was going to say, I was like, wait, we didn't do that show last night. But, but, but I, it made me uneasy. That was my first not fun experience on the mushrooms. It was weird. You know how I can really slow down. And do you think it maybe was because you were just in LA? I don't know. I, I know that this Friday in San Jose will be the last mushrooms for a month. I think I'm just, I'm well, yeah, because you're not taking it to the UK. I'm, I'm also taking, I think I'm taking enough of them where I'm not getting the same kind of high that I like. Probably. Um, but she was amazing. And she really made me re want to refocus in on, you know, I told you that I really, one of my, a couple of years ago, maybe four or five years ago, my refocus as far as my standup was, I want to make sure that everybody here at my shows I want them to leave thinking, oh, that just felt like a dude I know, a buddy of mine in my living room telling me stories. Right. That's really what I'm going for. But she took that to another fucking level. So it was amazing to watch, dude. Amazing. That's dope. I'm looking forward, like we're going to go see for my birthday next week. Uh, we're going to go see Chris Angel. I am freak. I'm pretty psyched for that. Pretty stoked. Now, I, I want to ask your opinion on two things as far as maybe glasses to wear to Mind Freak. You know what I'm going to pick. Because I'm, I'm wearing a light purple suit mm. with some, some legit... I'm either wearing gold or black shoes. And they're like 70s style men's shoes, but with a heel on them. Do you know what I'm talking about? Are they like zoot suit shoes? Yeah, I wore them during Tussle, tussle during the dance. So I, I, I want your opinion on these two, okay? This one. 
I'm just not crazy about that giant. I don't know. It looks like it's like a. It looks like there's like there's a bar across your forehead with those. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Hold on, Matt. Get me in. All right. Okay. Okay. Let me take the glass. These off. These are these. Okay. So not this, but the purple suit. I mean, I think the cheetah print would look good with the purple suit, but then I'd feel like you'd be straight out of like Boondocks. I don't know what Boondocks is. The, the Boondocks? Oh, oh, okay. The movie? No. The TV show? Not sure what that is. Okay, never mind. Was that a animated TV show oh, okay. as well? Oh, yes. I think I did see that. That was a pretty good show. Really good show. Okay, but oh how, my god. How about these? Yeah, look, we bought I was with you when you bought those. I like those. Yeah. I think these might You look be the like one. two you look like one of two things. You look like one, you look like uh you look like the third Wright brother who just wasn't okay. as smart as his other two brothers. Tommy Wright. Or Tommy Wrong. Okay. Um <laughs> or uh oh, what was the other one I had? Oh, oh, or you just look like you look like you know you ever seen Blind? that? No, you ever seen that video of that dog, that bulldog who gets in like his his owner's side passenger car and they put that little like aviator helmet on? Yeah. You look like that. You look like you have no peripheral. I, you look like a bug. Well, my question would be like, I think I could wear these inside a casino and walk around. I think these are tough. That's a tough look to walk around inside a casino. Don't you think? It's not a tough look if you don't think it's tough. Okay. I'll figure it out. I'll put that suit on. And, well, uh, also, what are you wearing on top? What kind of hat are you wearing? Oh, that's a good question. Because you can't wear that with a purple suit. No, 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 no. I'm not going to wear this. What are you going to wear? I don't know. The suit that I have isn't even tailored. So I have no idea. Why don't we get Why don't we get you a suit for next week? Why don't we just go get the suit that I have tailored? Why don't you go get it tailored then? Okay. Yeah, that's easy. Okay. Fair enough. But next week, Mind Freak, I'm pretty excited. And I really want to do a little gambling. Say less. I went to the slots today in the airport and I put a hundred in and I, I was like, whatever I went on these slots today, I'm giving away in San Jose at the show. Right. Mm, how much did you win? I lost. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the slots the other day with uh rich, rich is in town. My buddy, rich. Yeah. Um, and he's in town working, uh, that, that slapping. Yeah. It's the show, whatever it's called. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about? Um, which, by the way, I don't know how that got invented, but... It's amazing. It is insane that that is what they do for sport. It's amazing. It's insane. Um, and he was like, one day he was like, hey, the guys and I might go to Top Golf if you want to come. I was like, that sounds kind of fun. And then he goes, nah, it seems like everyone's kind of winding down. I don't know if that's going to happen. I go, if we're going to spend money, do you just want to go lose at gambling? And he was like, I like your thoughts. And I how was much like, did you lose? Uh, 150 bucks. Yeah, that's not great. No, no, but like Rich had a different uh, slot idea than me. You know, he would put 20 or 40 bucks into like a bunch of different ones and hop around. You know me. I like to put. No, I'm with you. I'm putting it all in one. I'm with we you. We hit a bonus. If I come out with more money than I started with, we walk out. And it, depending on how much more, we either walk out with our profit or we walk to another machine. Yeah. But I don't put 20 and 20 in any because it just doesn't work that way. No, I'm with you. So. I, and I think, I, I think, and I don't know anything about it but but by the way yeah i don't know anything about it but in my mind you have a better odds of winning of playing one machine correct you believe that yeah 100 percent. because look there are some machines that you come up to and you spend a couple times and you get that bonus yeah but most of the time the slot machine is going to make you put in some work before it gives you a reward by the way we didn't talk about this but who predicted only murders correctly both of us Remember I said? Well, bo no, both of us. We were in the car driving yeah. back from Absinthe. We, yeah. I was thinking about that all the way here, too. Because I, I heard you uh, spoiled it for mom. Yeah, I thought she watched it. She did. When did she watch stuff without you when all she knows? All the time. When you're home? All the time. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. I, I told her. because we, I, we, won't, we won't fuck it up for anybody else because I look if you're still catching up because I don't want to bust it down for anybody because it's only been out for a week. But we can you we can vaguely was that tell. last week? No, that was last week. Oh yeah, we won't burn it. Yeah, yet. I, I don't want to burn it yet but, for anybody. But yeah, both you and I predicted right when it happened. Iman looked at me and she goes, "You guys were so right." And I was I, like, "I know." Can't believe I didn't text you that night. I felt I so either. good, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I like, can't believe, yeah. "I can't believe we didn't talk about it the next day." I always get it wrong. Me too. I, <laughs> <laughs> me 
Liza Minnelli, you know who always gets it right? Yeah. Iman. Dude. Always. But like right from the beginning, she always has a guess right from the beginning too. It's like in the first two or three episodes, she's like, that's who it is. And then seven episodes go by and she's like, told you. And I'm like, how did you even do that? Do you- I will say the second season though of Only Murders, not yeah. this past one, the one before, yeah. that was the craziest twist. Like that yeah. one, you know, with the podcast yeah. and, the, and the podcast woman and the cop and the, and the missing girl. Yeah. And like that was, that was fucking nuts. That was so good. But, you know what they should do? It was, it was, uh, yeah, I loved this season. You know what so they really good. should do? Because here's the deal on Law and Order, on all the shows, whenever they investigate somebody first, you're like, that's not the person. No, no I, it's not okay. the person. So, but we you know what I, you know what you should do? You should make a where it's obvious and everyone's like, well, it can't be them because it's obvious and obvious it's them. And then it just ends up being them. I, I hate it. I hate it. But that also, you hate it that it's obvious or that it's, it's never, it's always the person. Who they never investigate. That's what it is. It's always well, the, the person, person they never investigate. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. That's how they set it up because you don't want to have too much into that person for people for it to get spoiled I'm for saying, people later on. Do the old reversey dersey, and 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 everyone thinks it's this person. They're like, now nah, that's too obvious, and then it's that person. I just like I, I I liked where they went with it. I feel like though, however, they took. I feel like there were some things that maybe could have been out like taken out in a couple of the episodes. Like I can't give you off the top of my head, but I feel like they took a long time to get to, to get to the discovering the discovery of the, did, the, the, sh- the piece of the shredder. Did, like, I just feel like it, I feel like it took maybe an episode too long for us to get to that realization. Did you see the Pete Davidson horror movie that came out? What's it called? What's it called? It just came out. Pete Davidson and and, um, and then it's like those like six teenage girls and like I don't think they were teenagers not te- but like are you sure I'm pretty sure they were supposed to be eighteen in or, high school in high school uh what was the name of that movie it, by the way but it was so fucking creative yeah it, that, did that, you watch it uh, I just watched it on TikTok what's it it was called P- Poopus Purpose P- Pampa. Mm. Uh, it was like one on t- word. On today's pra- episode praline. of Josh Wolf's Brain Breaks. Praline. <laughs> it was, I think it started with a P. It's not praline. Perp, p- pizzazz. Uh, what's it start with, Matt? What's the word? It starts with a, a with a P? I think Pete Davidson horror movie, right? Pete Davidson starts with a P. That's true. I think that's what you're thinking. No, of. <laughs> no, no, no. But did you see it? I watched it on TikTok. If I'm remembering the one you, you talked watched about. a movie on TikTok. Yeah, remember how I told you about this? There are some, there are like, are some uh, accounts on TikTok that just to get views, they post movies, but they post like clips of movies. So it'll be like a three minute clip of a movie. So like, I wa- I, I could watch like any of the Born series, like the Born Ultimatum or Born Identity. They any of that. cut the movie into three minute bits, and you watch an hour and a half, three minutes at a time. But in like, t- but in like ten different videos, so they cut all the unimportant stuff out, and then just hit like all the real like big moments. And so you pretty much just watch the whole thing in about ten minutes. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Bodies, bodies, bodies. bodies, bodies. bodies. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Not a P. So B. Yeah, but bodies. It could be. That's what we call this. The, when when the people who follow follow us potties potties potties, nah, when, nope. Yeah, I, I, I missed on that one. But dude, what were we saying before bodies bodies bodies? You were saying Pete David that was a good it was creative movie. Nah, and before that, we we're talking about murders only. I'm already gone. I'm I'm out on it. We were I talking forget. about we were talking about murders only. No, right before I was talking about this, I was talking about something else, but I forget what it was. Hey, dude, how about how we never get it right and how they should investigate? The other way around. No, you should stop guessing because I'm never going to remember. I usually don't remember what we previously talked about. That's why I was firing it off because I usually don't remember. Dude, can I tell you something super gross that happened to me? Uh, Another blowout? Stepped on a cockroach barefoot. Gross. Yo, dude. I... Oh, wait, question. Was it near the toes? It was... Guess it was like right below the big toe, that pad, the ball of your foot. Yeah, yo, dude, it was like I need to get you an anatomy class. It, you knew what I was talking about. Yeah, what did you call it though? Right below the big foot, the pad, right below the, the big pad foot. below the big toe. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I stepped on a cockroach barefoot. I think the only thing that I've ever stepped in barefoot grosser than that was, was dog shit. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, I've done that too because that did that did. It came up in between all my toes. Dude, I, I've i never 
wanted to cut off a body part more in my entire life. Oh, that sounds awful. Dude, it just was like, and then I heard, it was like, a, and I was like, oh. oh. What, what dog was it? Was it one of our dogs? No, dude, it was not my dog. Oh. I don't know whose dog it was, which made it worse. Where were you barefoot where dog shit was? At Beeman Park. Why were you barefoot at Beeman? It was back. I mean, remember when you got stung by that bee? Oh, because I was running around barefoot. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we at, there was a time when we did barefoot a little bit at Beeman Park. It's the only time I ever got stung by a bee. You got stung by a bee, and it was a dirty bee. Do you remember that? That was my nickname in high school. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was what they were dirty bees, and your fucking foot blew up. Yeah. And then I pitched two days later on it. Dude, your, your foot was so swollen. Yeah. And the doctor was like, yeah, it was a dirty bee. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. And I'm like, some bees... They just, they, when they sting you, they have like some sort of crazy bacteria on their stinger. And I was on antibiotics for like almost two weeks. Yeah, dude. Your foot was a giant rose. Yeah, it was giant. Did we have to get you a different cleat for that foot? No, it was just super tight. Do you? Super tight. Do you have fond, pitched, pitched a pretty good game on it though. Do you have fond memories of baseball? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, do. E- even though I it, have a lot of trophies in storage, dude. I got a lot of fond memories of baseball. Even though it didn't end exactly how you wanted it to end. Yeah, it just wasn't supposed to go that way. You know? But yeah, I have a lot of fond memories. I only have I have one home run that ever over ever went over a fence, and it was probably the hardest hit ball I've ever hit in my entire life. Do you have any regrets with how baseball ended for you? Absolutely. You do? Mm-hmm. How so? Uh, I think I would have liked to have tried again my sophomore year and tried out and worked that whole year to get back to that because that's what I told myself I was going to do. Yeah. But I think when I didn't make it, I wanted, I just, because I was over two on sports teams. Yeah. And so I, I just wanted to find something that I could be a part of. You love being part of a team. Agreed. Mm-hmm. And when I went to go run track, I was like, well, I'm fast, but I'm not like, Sprinter fast. Yeah. And I'm not doing long distance because fuck that. Yeah. So I found, I was like, where are the only other places I can go? Pole vault, high jump, long jump. Yeah. And and I'm not doing shot put or discus because I just don't have No, to. dude. And those three sports that you mentioned. Are, pole vault, with- discus, and shot put. All super hard. Yeah. And you need to be super strong to do yeah. any of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that, those, those are hard. I will say but that, so. Yeah, but, yeah, but so I, I went from long, I went to try long jump because I was like, uh, run fast, jump far. That I can do that. That that seems like something that's doable. And then there was one event that I hadn't seen, but I looked over and saw my English teacher coaching it. And I looked over the triple jump. No, no, no. My my so my freshman year English teacher, his name was Nick Kunalis. To this day, top five favorite teacher of all time. Yeah, he's up there. I think he might he might be at the top of the list. It's it's. Hard to top Nick Canales. He was the hurdles coach. And so I, I was like, hey, long jump sucks. Can I try this? He was like, sure. And so we just, I had him first period every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And so after that, I'd have him come out and coach track. And I think I was looking, I was really just looking for something to be a part of. And he was such an accepting teacher and an accepting guy that I felt really like I was a part of that team. And then there was like, you know, there was sophomores and juniors and seniors on there. And it was like, I felt like I wasn't just stuck at a freshman level anymore. You know what I'm saying? It brought a little bit of confidence out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think I just fell in love with that. I also, I also like just loved hanging out with that teacher with Mr. Canales. Cause mm-hmm. he was just, he was cool. He was relatable. He was still young. He was one of the younger teachers. So he was able to kind of like get on a level with us. Um, He's the kind of teacher that if he pulled up to your desk to sit and have a conversation with you, he's pulling out a chair and flipping it backwards. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I'm like sitting forward on it, like to like level up, which always made me laugh because every school has that one teacher. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And Canales was that one teacher for sure. And so I think we after, didn't have that teacher. No, you didn't have that. No. Oh yeah. yeah we, that, that was, yeah. Every, every school I've been to, there's been one of those people. I remember- and it's always a guy. It's never, a, it's never a woman. It's never a woman. It's always Actually, a dude. We had a dude named Chris Collins. I grew up with a kid named Chris Collins. Yeah, it, it may be Chris. It was Chris Collins. That's weird. Who ended up being the baseball coach? Who was a young dude, um, and he could kind of get on your level, and and he was cool because he swore. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I would tell you, man, I remember watching the um, you at the track and watching that triple jump. The triple jump sat, looks like something somebody got real drunk and invented. It's so hard. It's the weirdest. Why not just why do you gotta jump like that? Uh, it looks like like a like a drunk driving test. It's such a crazy event. Though. Yeah, it, 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 actually, it actually looks like something that a cop would make you do on a DUI. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did want to ask, uh, it was interesting to me watching you with baseball because I remembered how, I knew how much you loved it. Uh -huh. But I also knew like, just at the time, the way your body was developing, you just were, there was no power to hit. And that was such I a, was also scared as hell in the box. Yep, 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 yep. yep. You were timid. And you let that, you let almost let the ball stop the bat sometimes. Yeah, but I just also. Why do you I, think that was? I couldn't read a ball. Hmm. I couldn't read a ball. I couldn't read it coming out of the pitcher's hand. I just like my my reflexes are good. My hand eye is super good. Yep, like yep, I, I'm yep, not yep. taking away from that. But I want everybody to know. There, look, there are sports are hard. There's a lot of hard things to do in different sports. I'm telling you right now, the hardest thing to do in any single sport, technically is hit a fucking baseball. Well, I don't think there's any doubt. It's not even close. You doubt. have to use a skinny, round, cylindrical object to then hit another round object coming at you, moving at different speeds, and literally moving in the air. Yeah. And you have to square it up. It's impossible. Yeah, you it's, have to get the one flat on the one flat. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. Very difficult. Very difficult. It should literally not be possible for people to do it. But to have that eye, to see where a ball is going, to see a rotation, I just could never see it coming out of a pitcher's hand. There was also times where like, there would be off-speed pitches that would come and they would start at my head and I would fall out of the way and then they would cross the plate. Yeah, but you so, also, dude, it was not just off speed and curve there was something about you there you just you had confidence in the field you had no confidence in the batter's box in the field i had places to move if a ball was coming at me so you were scared uh, and this I was is not scared to be, i was scared, scared of being of hit got it, got it got it i got hit a couple times in that batter's box i got, I, I think I, everybody does i got hit in the head though twice yeah i got hit in the chin once yeah I'll, well, all that actually i got hit in the head the third time but it didn't actually hit me in the head remember it snuck under my yeah like i don't know and those were balls that i thought were going to come back into the zone but they were fastballs, not breaking balls. So, and I couldn't tell what it was going to be what. And so I just always got hit by the fastball because I never, because every other time I would see a ball coming me from that angle, I'd be like, oh, that's not going to hit me. Yeah. That's going to come back across the plate. And it did. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't know, but like even in the field as a pitcher, when I had a ball that was hit right back at me, I still had, I, I still have room and something to protect me. I have that glove. I have a little, that little bit of extra confidence. Yeah. In the batter's box, yeah, you have a bat, but again, to so, square that bat up to deflect the ball coming at you is going to be really so hard. So you were just, and this is obviously no judgment, a lot of people, you were scared of the ball. And so that explains, yeah, I got it. I got it. was just scared of getting hit. Yep, that explains. But I do, and also, but I do remember there were times like when I played that last season at Toluca Lake, which is my least favorite season of baseball yeah, yeah. ever. Oh my God. I'm not even going to talk about that trade. Yeah, good team. idea. But there was there was one time where I was like, I'm going to stop being scared of the ball. And I like I did that thing where I pick up three bats and yeah. I was just like trying to really just speed up my hands. It's like, if I'm going to be scared, that's fine. But I might as well be swinging this bat really fast. Yeah. And I did. And I, sw and I swung that bat as hard as I could and hit a ball 20 feet from the fence at Toluca Lake. And I yeah. was like, damn, I hit that ball 300 feet. Holy shit. And then never hit a ball again after that pretty much. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Ever. But I will also, say, yeah. man. But also, but I also will say that Toluca Lake team. Can I be honest? Took some fun out of baseball for me. Yeah, you've we've talked about that before on here. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. talk about it more. But yeah. I was saying like that. That that experience really was like, like I understand. Like I was almost like that. I, I was. I felt like I was in the position where it was like, oh, parents are forcing me to play on a team that are a sport that I just. This is. There's no fun in it. We didn't. Yeah. He, yeah, fuck it. I'm not yeah, going to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Um, so you're, what do you want to talk about today? Your new, Drake dropped? Drake dropped a new album. What's the chances that you can listen to that? Zero. Why? I think he's, I, I don't like his music at all. Any of it? Not, not a note, not a bar. I think he's incredibly captivating. I think he's a funny dude. He's super funny. I think he's got a great sense of humor, but that, that music is not my, that's not for me. Fair enough. I, 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 I could not, and I tried, dude. You know, I, I really did try. I, 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 when you like something, I'll take a listen. 
And yo, I just think it's straight up doo doo stew. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I was gonna give you because I know you said you've tried it, but I, I, I wonder. I'm trying to think if there's an album, a Drake album that I could give to you to listen to that you might like. Dude, I would love to see him get back into doing some acting or some comedy and sketches. Or I don't know if he's ever hosted <sighs> SNL. It feels like he probably has. I think he has. But I'm sure he was great on that stuff. And I think he's super personable and really charming. And I think his music is... Well, he just, just dropped an album. He might he might make an SNL. I think dance. there's zero... And, and look, man, I don't know enough about maybe his entire discography, but I, I, find, I don't find anything to be super original. And I feel like his music isn't changing at all with him. And so to me, that feels like a pretty stagnant artist. Who's just going? I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah, like. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess I understand that. I, I think if I was going to give you a Drake album, it'd be an older Drake album. Okay. Do you remember when I was working on Chelsea lately, and he was on the show? Yeah. You want to know what album that was? That was Take Care. That was like the album, not that put Drake on the map, but that was like. So the album before that was So Far So Gone, and it was pretty much supposed to be a mixtape, but he he got discovered by Lil Wayne. Is he in your top five artists? I mean, for your generation, Probably. for your generation, I mean, Drake, Taylor Swift, mm. there's, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I just don't like Taylor Swift. How could you not like Taylor Swift and like Drake? She... Wait, 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 wait. pause. I mean, the music's different. Yeah. <laughs> that, what do you mean? There's a lot of reasons, She's actually. She's so much better than him. I disagree. Oh, my God. Does he write and produce all of his own stuff? He seems like he might. Does he? I, I bet you he's he's definitely got writers. Yeah. But I, I bet you he's in on all of it. But I but like I bet you he writes stuff and then shows writers and then they probably all tweak it. But I bet you Taylor does the same thing. So Taylor writes and produces. I know she writes and produces and all And she of puts it. on three and a half hour shows. But there's you don't think there's Drake could put on a three and a half hour does show. Does he? No. Oh. Okay. So I can I be honest? Yeah. I wouldn't go watch a three hour Drake show. Are you fucking nuts? I'd go, you wouldn't go watch with the Swifties three and a half hours. Zero chance. You'd have to pay me. I would sleep through it. Sleep? Sleep. No way. Sleep. I will say After though, an hour, I'd be like, ah, I'm bored. You know I'm way more team Miley than I am team Taylor. Like if I was going to have to pick between Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift, I don't think there's any, it's not even close. But, but like, it's hard to argue. She could be arguably the biggest music act of all time. Arguably, she's well, Drake has with this, the Beatles. Wait, hold on. There Michael was, Jackson. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Elvis. Pretty sure Drake just tied most number one hits ever. Yeah, yeah, but ever. Beatles, Michael Jackson. Uh, uh, hard to put Elvis in there. Beatles, Michael Jackson, Taylor Swift. Ah, uh, this is gonna be controversial, but are you putting Drake in there? I don't. Oh, I wouldn't. Oh, you know, you know who you have to put in wait, for real. Hold on, I have one that I would put in there too. Okay, which for other people might not be, but for almost a decade, these this group took a, One Direction. Dude, go eat a dick with One Direction. Dude, those dudes for a couple of years were Eight dicks. They are not in the top. I'll tell you who is George Strait. The most number one hits in the history of music. Do you know he has over 60 number one hits? Six zero. What, define number one, like Billboard number one? Well, uh, Matt, will you Google because the, the who has the most number one hits in the history of music? Oh, you're talking like Billboard, like Billboard number one yeah, hits. Okay, yeah. Okay. It, dude, it's crazy. But I, I think I think if I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to guess at the list, okay? Michael Jackson... Uh, j j uh, uh, Taylor Swift might not have be up there in the number one. Drake hits. is for sure up there. Drake, the Beatles. Ooh, I bet you. I wonder if Whitney Houston or Celine Dion or anybody like that is in this list. For most number one hits, no way. No, no, no. Most number one hits, not okay. Not stayed at Billboard number one the longest, but uh, most uh, number one hits. I can't. The Beatles are number one. That can't be right. I thought George Strait. Can you see? What's that list look like? The Beatles? I mean, I thought George Strait had like 60. Will you Google how many number one hits George has? George. Mariah Carey? Yo, dude. 
you know what? Can I tell you something? And I, I, uh, I hope this gets out and I hope that there's a cease and desist on this. So we get more publicity <laughs> and I can't tell you who this came from, but okay. It's somebody who was in Mariah's camp for a long time. You ready for this? Okay. I heard that she is on the, you know, when she's out in public, the devia, diva-ist of divas. Or I carry? Yeah. But when she is home, she's like, like, uh, like eating mac and cheese out of a box. Like that kind of like white trash. Well, yeah, she doesn't have, well, here's, she doesn't have money until December comes around. Dude, she's got money all the time. Right. But she, she, I bet you she doesn't do anything all year. And she just, had a residency here for a while. I think she's maybe but, pulling but, back. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? All she has to do is wait for December every year. And then she makes a bunch of money in one month and then lives off it for the rest of the year. But she also, like, dude, if, if she's white trashy like that at home, she has a persona that, people see her as she's not going to break that persona going out in public of course not dude so she's going to do that and it'd be her her true colors in her own hermit crab, yeah but i just kid. i find it funny the stories that this person told us about like there was an assistant she wouldn't let go home for a week they had to stay at the house and she would wake up just to make sure that the assistant was still there tell me matt that's what crazy, right? right? So George Strait has held the world record for the most number one hit singles across all charts and genres with 60 number one hits since 2013. 60 since 2013. That's six a year. That's fucking crazy. But that's not necessarily Billboard. That's just it, across it, all it, genres. It, it says uh, he is the only artist in the history of music of any kind to have a top 10 hit every year for 30 years. And it's across all all charts and genres. That's pretty fucking crazy, right? That's pretty good. Have you, could you name one George Strait song? Texas. <laughs> <laughs> gotta assume he's got a song called Texas. <laughs> no, he doesn't have a song. But are you sure? I know there are, uh, he has a song with Texas in the title. All my exes live, live in Texas. Texas. I know that one. Yeah, you do? Yeah. Well, that's because... Uh, is it on uh, Family Guy? No, it's actually uh, off a of Drake song. All my exes live in Texas like I'm George Strait. That's the bar. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even Drake is stealing from George Strait. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what's crazy? Early Drake, like mixtape Drake, is like a notorious uh, beat and lyric stealer. There's been multiple videos about it. Really? Where he's taken songs that were kind of like one-hit wonders that people forgot about. Yeah. Took the lyrics, put it in his own voice completely changed the beat and made it into a completely different song and it's like nobody's noticed. No shit. Do you want me to look and see if I can find it? Yeah, fine. So, so, and, but nobody called him out on that? I think he has, but uh, I don't know. I bet you Drake had more money than the dude who fell off whose song he's stealing. Do you Listen, know what I'm saying? I mean, he, I, I will tell you something. It, um, Vanilla Ice really took the sampling, right? to the next level and made people realize, oh shit, there's a lot of money to be made off these good songs in other genres. When Drake stole Eminem's flow. What? I don't think you can play that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it uh, a vid is it an audio? That's it's, not it's not good. That's not that's not going to make for good podcast. It's it's yeah, it's going to be an audio, but it's stop playing for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, let's not let's not do that. But yeah, so uh, there's probably uh, there's like a couple different things but it, that's shown that Drake uh supposedly steals uh lyrics and beats. So if you were making a music festival, right? We've had this conversation before. We have? Yeah. Multiple times. And, and did I I pick Prince? Probably. Are you picking for 3 days headliners? Are you picking Are you picking so like we would just do headliners? For Friday, Saturday, Sunday? I think so. We would do three a night, I would think. I would I would just change genres every night. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I would but, I, oh, oh, so speaking of that, sorry, speaking of that George Strait bar that I just yeah. the are there any memorable bars that you can remember? Like that like from songs that you used to listen to? Because on that new Drake album, by the way, there's a Drake and J. Cole song. Might be my favorite song of the year. Oh uh, like Really? Oh my god. God, just you know how much I love J. Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's just like, there's just, he's this, 
Oh my God. There's so many good bars. There's a couple in there. Uh, he teases J Cole's tease the name of his new album. It's going to be called the fallout. Um, the bar is, uh, the album's going to be called fallout, but it's ironic because there ain't never been fallen out for me. And so that's going to be his next album. And then there's a, another one that he says, and it says the Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake. There's a meme that went around in our generation yeah. you know, the, of the three Spider-Mans like, yeah, looking yeah, at yeah. each other. So he says that, but there's a third one. So I could like, if I was going to put a third face on that, like the Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake, it would be J. Cole, Drake, and then Kendrick. They'll all just be staring at each other like that. <laughs> I, I, if I, I love that. If it's I so had funny a memorable, me. memorable bar, what, what do you mean? Like a lyric in a song? Yeah. Uh, I could like, I could name like, there's a bunch of Lil Wayne ones. Lil Wayne's got crazy bar, crazy memorable ones. I, I don't know if I have, because I, I'm not, I'm not taking lines out of the songs that I love and that they stick with me, but I have certain songs that have always stuck with me. Uh, you know, because what I love about music is that for whatever reason, more than like a TV show or a joke or a movie, your emotion and a time of your life gets attached to music. Right. So there's so much in it. You know, it's why people like, will defend their favorite musicians, people who defend Chris Brown or somehow think Michael Jackson didn't fuck little kids or... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when you're defending these people that you don't know. Right. Even though you know they've done terrible things. Yeah. But it's because of the emotion hmm. that the music brings out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I saw that I saw that video of that guy rushing Michael on stage when he goes on that crane and goes up. Yeah. And that guy risks his life and just runs up onto that crane and Michael's just like holding onto him. He's like cuz if you die, I never perform ever again. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. like even if we everybody knows this was your fault, if you die, ah, it's over. Like uh but yeah, like it, do you think there'll ever be another artist like that? Like Michael Jackson, like like that kind of star sh stardom, because like look, there's a lot. You of, mean Taylor Swift? Are are women passing out in the audience and having to be stretchered out? No. Okay, then but, it's not the same. But nope. I mean, they did that with the Beatles too and Elvis. Great. Okay, but no, but but Mike's the most recent one. Okay, but I they but are also men and women weeping in the audience when Taylor Swift is on stage and when she goes somewhere, yo, they had to wheel her out of the football stadium in a popcorn vendors fucking whatever that Bus, is. Yeah. Like it's next level. I, 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 I mean, I think she's the closest we will come. The difference is dude, between Michael Jackson and the Beatles and Elvis and all this shit is that, your your focus on your entertainment was made way more lasered in because you didn't have a million things to choose from. Right. So you're like, oh, I have these four bands to choose from. Right. Underground bands were truly underground. Right. Right. And so like, this is this is a different thing. So it's, to me, it's almost more. Even though there are more people, it's even more impressive because there are so many more choices now and choices for entertainment without leaving the house. Right. So right. super impressive what, what she's done. Dude. I'm not taking away from her stardom. I just also just don't, don't really care for Taylor Swift music. You're not a Swifty? Nope. You don't like one song? Name a Taylor Swift song you like. It's okay. That I like or yeah. that I know. Do you still, do you still hate Zac Efron because he's handsome? No, I just don't really like Zac Efron. You hated him because he was handsome. You hate yeah, him. Well, you, yeah. Well, you know why you I hate him? You hate him because your girlfriend loved him. But I hate him because my ex always compared me to him when we looked nothing the same. So I was like... How would she compare you to Zac Efron? She would be like, you look like Zac Efron? No, she would tell him, tell me how much better he was than me when she had no idea who the fuck he was. How much better of a person or just better looking? Because he is a better looking human than 99.9% .9 of the people. Very true. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's way... He, and I'll tell you this. I hear he's not a nice person. Get out of here, dude. That, okay, ready? So about that, back to that track teacher, Nick Canales. Yeah. Okay, this is where I've heard this from. Yeah. He went up to her uh, with his young niece at the time. She was probably like, probably like six or seven. And they went up to him and they were at a, they were, I forget where they were. 
but went up and she was like, and he was like, hey, she's just like a, a a really big fan. She just wants to say hello. And he was like, and he pretty much told them, no, like, leave me the fuck alone. Uh, he, he, which, by the way, I don't blame celebrities for not saying yes to everybody all the time. I don't. I don't. Yeah. yeah. But also, you can't tell a seven-year-old little girl to fuck Here's off. my one thing on that. Okay. It's a kid. Here's my one thing. And I'm... I'm going to say a couple things on this. First of all, you don't know what his day's like. At, yeah. the, at, at the end of the day, everybody, you're walking up to a human being who's had a life, a day, who knows, maybe a loss, maybe just had the worst fan interaction he's ever had in his life. Maybe somebody crossed the boundaries. You don't know what's happening. Okay. Right. Um, And so that is the first thing. The second thing I would say is, hey, boy, as somebody who, okay, Zach Efron is, I've never come close to encountering the kind of stuff and fan interaction he has. Right. And you know, I'm, I'll take pictures of everybody. And anyway. yep. But there have been times where even I've been like, or I'm eating dinner or something. Where, and I still say yes, but I know I feel like, hey, just give me two seconds. You did say no that one time. Eat this steak. You did say no that one time at dinner, the first time we ever came to Vegas for my birthday. Do you remember that? Yep. We were eating in the Mandalay Bay right before we went to go see Beatles Love, Cirque. Mm -hmm. And like three women came up and asked for a photo at the dinner table. And you said... Do you remember what I said? You said something along the lines of... Uh, I would love to, but I think it's, I think it's just something wrong. Like I'm having dinner. It's my son's birthday. I said, it's my son's birthday where the, the cake is about to come out. I'm happy to take a picture with you, but you're going to have to wait until we're done. That was did it. you end up taking a photo with them? Yep. Oh, yep. Oh yeah. You did walk over there yep. after our dinner was yep. over. Yep. Yeah. But, and I don't listen, man, again, I, re I remember that cause I went and watched college basketball on TV. Cause yeah. it was March Madness. <laughs> again, dude, we are, we are, you're dealing, even though it's your job and, you're, you're a human being. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so like, I hate, I wouldn't want to, I haven't never heard anything bad about the dude. Uh, besides, well, that's, I'm not going to get into that stuff, but I've never heard anything bad about the dude. Right. Um, he is way more barrel chested than I thought he was going to be. Barrel chested. You know, he's got, they make him go shirtless in a lot of his, probably not make him. That's the selling point. Listen, dude, I'm there for it too. I'm not. Let me ask you, did you see Magic Mike? Did I see Magic Mike? What year did Ma the you first Magic Mike come out? You would have known if you've seen Magic Mike. Don't act coy. No, no, truthfully. Did you I, see Magic Mike? I don't Magic think I Mike? did. I don't think I did. Let me tell you, I did not go to Magic Mike because I thought it was going to be a great movie, although it was pretty good. Couldn't have been that good. It was pretty good. <laughs> Are you kidding? I think I saw the beginning scene of it where they pick up that new guy. Like guy that, the, the new Are recruit. You, Are you telling me... I'm going to go to a movie. I'm going to get to see... Because, I, look, good. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm straight. I'm a straight dude. I like, I like, I like having sex with women. But Congrats. I, but a good body is a good body. I, I've said this a million times. If you walk down the street and you're a woman and you have a good body, I, I admire... Good, the same way if a dude... You and I do this in the airport. That dude was handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You and I do that. I, Absolutely. I, that's not my hang-up, man. So you telling me I'm going to see... McConaughey and Channing Tatum, plus the three of these other guys, other dudes, and and I get to see because you you know, dude, I I'm pretty serious about working out. True. So sometimes I want to see the male body to be like, yeah, I want to get that. I actually, you know, that V right there. You went to Magic Mike for motivation. Fuck yeah, I did, dude. And that's just to be next, like some next level psycho shit, dude. And to be like, dude, that is fucking. Oh, that's straight up not peak McConaughey, but do you McConaughey? He's not the most, hand, you know who the most handsome person ever on a screen ever? Hold on. Is it Hemsworth? Is that what you're going to say? Uh, he's pretty close. But I would say for me, most handsome movie star ever, Paul Newman. Now, he didn't have the body. Dude, look at young Paul Newman. Are you fucking kidding me right now? And funny and sexy with those eyes. But if, you, if I'm going to go man list, you know what my top of my female all time. That this guy is your most handsome movie star, TV, anything ever on screen. Let me see. Fuck yes. 
dude, Paul Newman, consistent, stayed handsome through, right? He didn't lose his handsome. Paul Newman, dude. Let me give you my list. Ready? Nah. Let me give you my list. Ready? With that forehead? <laughs> That's a rough picture. Are you serious? <laughs> You can land a fucking plane on that thing. <laughs> Look at those eyes, dude. Look at Look those at that eyes. Forehead. But now this God is God damn. This is before that everybody was working out all the time, right? But if you if I'm not, I'm, well, we're still not talking about working out. I'm talking about the dude, massive okay. you ready for this? Ready for bulge this? on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you stop it right now. I'm just saying. Okay. All right. Let, let me just tell you right now. Okay, ready? Paul Newman. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Ryan Gosling. He, he, because you got to pick him blonde Gosling in where the pines are while he rides the motorcycle with the tats and he's married to Eva Longoria. Can I just Wait, say is that Eva Longoria? No, what's her name? I don't know. But can I say this about, and I want to be complete. Let's be completely honest about Ryan Gosling. Okay. A and Channing Tatum a little bit. It's weird that I picked two guys whose eyes feel like they're a little too close together. But if you, look, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's kind of funny. But you look at Gosling, dude. I don't know, man. Yeah, Gosling. He yeah, Gosling. Dude, dude, are you so kidding I, okay, me? Him, okay. and beyond, him and where the pine trees Listen, or the place beyond the pines. We're gonna go off the top of my head, okay. And so I know I'm gonna forget some people, but young, young Newman, maybe young Redford, Chris Hemsworth is the most charming man in the entire world, and I'm gonna. Ooh, I hate to do this to you, Burt Reynolds. I hate to do it to your mustache. And you're Smokey and the Bandit. And I love how funny you were in all those. But I just might... And, and young Steve McQueen. God. But I have to go with Gosling. I think so. I think I go Gosling, Hemsworth, Redford, Newman. But I know I'm missing people. And for women, I my top is Selma Hayek. Mine too. And then probably Raquel Welch. I don't know who that is. Dude, uh, a Gwegel Raquel Welch. Uh, yeah, you're telling me Ryan Gosling and where the uh, the place beyond the pines. Yo, yeah, yeah, and and in crazy sexy love, crazy stupid love. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> get it right. I didn't have to look yeah, up from the phone. Yeah, get it but, right. But wait, get, but, get it right. If I don't know who I go besides Raquel Welch and Selma Hayek, I mean, your mom was in a movie, so we'll put her in there for sure. So your mom, Selma Hayek, Raquel Welch, and oh, you know who I'm gonna put on there, and I know. And, I, and I'm going to use her as on screen as uh, in this quotations. And this is going to be controversial, but I was such a huge Anna Nicole Smith fan. I know, I know these people's names. I just know what people look like. I know like. that's going to be an inch. That's so such a departure from Selma Hayek, Raquel Welch, and Beth, because even though those three women look different, they have the same sensibility, high cheekbones, curves, brown hair. But Anna, Anna Nicole Smith, there was something about her that I think is in my that's that's right there for me. Oh, she's oh she's a she's a former playmate. Yeah, but she was in a couple terrible movies, so I'll put her on there. Well, what kind of movies? Yeah, they weren't great. No, no, but I, I, are we talking about the same movie? They weren't porn. That's what I'm talking about. They might have been softcore with some heavy petting. Yeah, I don't really like her face. What? Her chin looks like she can cut through steel. What? What picture are you looking at? It's fucking either of these ones, Let bro. Let me see. What she, are you talking about? She's got about? that fucking Reese Witherspoon kind of chin. Yeah, that looks pointier than <laughs> I remember. Uh, she she looks like fucking Jim Carrey with the mask on. You like, stop it right <laughs> look now. Look at that. That's not a great picture. <laughs> you stop it right now. That is not a good photo. Who was your four? I, I didn't have a four. I didn't know we were talking about a four. Neither did I. We just do. I don't know what we're talking about anything. Yeah, no. Um, for okay, we're talking about guys. Ryan Gosling for sure is up there for me. Um, I'm also in for Ryan Reynolds just because I think he's charming as fuck because he's super yeah, funny. Yeah. Are you putting any of the Chris's in there? Um, Hemsworth, Pine, Evans, Pratt, Pratt, not a chance. Pine, not a chance. Yeah, I mean, you're not, dude. You don't give Chris Pine enough shine. No, no, I, I think Chris Pine is better looking than Chris Pratt, but neither of them are in that top four. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Gosling, you, Reynolds. You I'm, love Chris Evans, dude. 
I do love Chris you Evans. You fucking Dude, that scene love Chris Evans. Where he's Evans. holding, I know it's fake, but that scene where he's holding the helicopter on the roof, are you fucking kidding me? You have mentioned that scene so many times. The only scene I got to mention. Yeah. <laughs> The only scene I gotta mention because when I mention it, y'all know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh like, oh my god. Um, and fourth, I don't know. I mean, I I feel bad that I left. Honestly, hard to leave Denzel out. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. I, I might have to drop Robert Redford and throw Denzel in there. This one might be controversial. Ooh. This one might be controversial. I'm throwing in. Uh, well, no, that's because no, maybe not. Because I don't really enjoy looking at him. Who? Let's just say Daniel Craig. What? And Bonds. Just like. Yeah, dude. But you're talking about over a career. Yeah. That's not. I don't think he's no, in there. He's no, not no, in there. he's not in there. He was that one scene walking out of the water. Yeah, well, yeah. Just like, I and, don't know. And, and by the way, I can hear in the comments already from some of you guys. You fuck. Hey, you, hey gay lords. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, homos. I can hear it. I want to tell you this. If. If you can't acknowledge that another dude is good looking, you'll never convince me that you don't want to fuck that dude. <laughs> there, you will never convince me. I'm going to tell you right now. If you are so upset, if somebody being gay upsets you so much that you get angry, you're angry that you want to fuck that dude. That might be true. I don't think there's any doubt, dude. So just let, open your arms, dude. Let it in. Yeah, not, we're, yeah, we're not. Well, I mean, yeah, we're not asking you to open your butt and let it in. It's just we're just asking nah, you to, dude, if you want to. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Knock it out. Yeah, yeah. But also, you know, if you don't, don't. But like, you know, there's no need to get anal about it. No pun intended. I, all pun intended. Oh, all pun intended. That's why. I well, said then it. there is a need to get anal about it. Only if you need. Only if you have to. You don't have to. That's the point. Nobody's forcing anal on anybody. Relax over there. <laughs> <laughs> and with that note being said, we've run out of time. Um, <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. We are in San Jose this weekend. Come through. It will be the last of the mushroom shows for a minute. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do 3.5 grams. That feels like a real trip. You're going to hallucinate. I oh, no, 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 no. You are going to for sure... Hallucinate. I'm going to three grams. You're still going to hallucinate. Okay. Okay. By the way, if you go to three, you might as well do three now. Really? Oh, I'm peer pressuring you. I'm I'm not telling you what's going to happen to prevent it. I'm just warning you what's going to happen, but I definitely want to see it. Yeah. Don't fucking, don't tempt me with a good time. Yeah. Hey, Kevin Euclid, I expect to see you on Friday uh, night. You, I would love to finally say what's up and shake a hand and definitely imitate your batting stance. When You've I see never you. met Kevin Euclid? No, I've never met Euc. How is that possible? I don't know. You've met him. When? You've never met him? He wasn't a, he, all he, the times he's, that he's, I... He's never been to Poppy's Golf. Not when we were there, but he's been there. But either way. Right. He wasn't... Wait, was he at the roast? Mm, no. He no. wasn't at anything of the roast from that weekend. He wasn't at the Buckholz Foundation that, not that weekend. <coughs> he hasn't been at any of the things... Red Sox related that I've ever been to. That's crazy. I, he's a good have, he's a good friend of mine. It's it's I, crazy I that you we, haven't met. We him. talk about you all the time. Yeah, and I have a great, beautiful signed bat that says Jacob Happy Hanukkah from yeah, Kevin Euclid. Don't it. get me wrong. Dude, he I came love in that big shit. For that, dude. Yeah, I love that shit. Absolutely, it's right next to my VTech one too, which you know, yeah. are both great. But yeah, I've never had a chance to actually meet you yet. I hope he comes through. You come through. Me too. You. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates, everybody. Hey, again, a huge thanks to everybody who watches this and, and everybody who comes out to the shows. Fort Worth was amazing. Uh, so fucking good. Um, I had such a good time down there. You guys, it's really humbling. So humbling. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I would ask you, if you like this podcast, please tell a couple people about it. Uh, Jacob and I are having such a good time with it. Uh, at Josh Wolf Comedy and all my socials, hit it. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Like he said, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. UK and Europe. We are, what, two weeks away? Yeah. Yeah. We are 11 days almost to the T 
of getting on a plane and yeah. flying to Ireland. Yeah. We are so close. Can we we're flying Josh? together now, by the way. I'm not AF. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to France we're, anymore. We're not going to Paris, everybody. There is a bed bug outbreak. And we thought that that might not be the best way to start the vacation. So, no, I'd have been pretty upset. Dude, I was learning French to surprise your mom. I've wasted all this time. Je m'appelle Josh. Yeah, you've wasted a lot of time, and that's still the only thing you can say. Je suis something. Merci beaucoup. Oh, yeah, yeah, Merci yeah. Merci beaucoup. Je suis means I am. Je suis, um, uh, I don't know. Josh. Um, but so there wasn't that much time that went to waste. Yeah. And uh, let's be honest. You didn't waste that much time. I wasted at least four hours. More. You wasted at least four hours to come up with Jumapel Josh. Well, I can. I, I wrote some other stuff down. Yeah, you're like Joey from, from Friends. We've already discussed this. Yeah, yeah, but I, I would have just walked around going, Jumapel Josh? I know. Jumapel, oui. So it wouldn't have really been a surprise to mom. She would have thought you just learned that stuff as a joke. No, 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 no. I, I was going to write down six or seven phrases like, may I have some more water? Um, where is a good place to get a good steak? So I was going to trick her into thinking that I had really learned some good stuff. And you did. Nah, well, I did. But now we're not going. I didn't learn how to say how many bed bugs are in your hotel. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. that's, yeah, it's pretty weird. But by the way, I had heard about that for like the last week or two. And now you guys hadn't said anything. And I was, I was like, man, should I tell them there's a bed bug outbreak in Paris? Yeah. Why didn't you? I figured you guys Dude, would figure it out. Some of the videos were disturbing. No, nah, it's a lot. It's too much. It's And even if it's overblown, which I'm sure it is because the news likes to stoke fear, even if it's overblown, I, e even if it's not an outbreak, but it's just like present, I'm, I'm, it's a hard pass for me. Yeah. But I don't want to do it. But also, I will say, like, it makes me worried to travel around Europe now to places that are close to France in case they fucking spread. I agree. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do the bed bud check before we put our bags and shit down. We'll check the mattress and shit. Yeah, but also the bed bugs might be in like furniture. The mattress. The mattress. Okay. That's what you're going to check, the mattress. Well, yeah, I know I'm going to check the mattress, but do you think they might be like in furniture in the carpet or anything like that? You know, we're not going to have carpet in the hotel rooms <laughs> that's that we're true. in. That's true. And I don't think any of your rooms will have furniture. Ours were, but yours probably won't. We're getting bigger rooms in you. No, you're not. I was with mom. She booked the same exact hotel rooms. Mm, she didn't book them. She just reserved them. We booked bigger rooms than you. We we have more stuff. We're we're older people. We have nicer rooms. Okay. You, you know what I mean? Like we have. We're gonna have my furniture and my furniture, my bag luggage, and your mom's luggage. So mainly just mom's luggage. It's gotta be legit. At least three large suitcases. Yeah, I'll probably have two. Right. Um, well, yeah, I might have I might have a big one and a small one. Either way, I need a new suitcase before we go anyways because mine is a broken. Yeah, your again. mom and I are getting them too. We'll get you some. Okay. I will say also the good news for you and your mom, but mostly you because your mom already knows this. Oh, oh, I know. I know. What? I know. Now that we're flying together, are we on the same reservation or no? We are flying together to but Dublin. Are we on the same reservation? No, we mm. couldn't switch, but I'll so, get you. It's all right. But the, for you guys, it's upgrades, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you this. You know what else is good news for you? Y you know, in my mind, I'm saving a week's worth of money that we were going to spend in France. Oh, am I going to get more money? I, I mean, I think we'll just end up spending probably more while we're traveling around Europe. Sick. Do you know what I mean? I had a certain budget in mind, and now that budget, instead of three weeks, is packed into two weeks. Sick. So that'll be good for us. S we should go to the All Saints store in London. Well, there's an All Saints store here. Let's yeah, go to a but store. The All, but the All Saints store in London has different styles because it's also going to be a different season. It's, they're going to have different things. But let's just go to a store that we can't walk into here. And if you're going to say All Saints, you have to say it with a British accent. All Saints. All Saints. Uh, you know, I, I have been practicing without moving my mouth. And it really does. No, that wasn't No, it, it did not. <laughs> it really does. Uh, I can't even hear it now. Hold on. Say Peaky Blinders, then you can hear it. Peaky fucking blinders. There you go. Hello. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Ready, ready? I'm here to enjoy my holiday. That actually was pretty good. Uh, we're from the States. No. Nope. Uh, that was Dutch. It's my wife and I. No, now you're Australian. <laughs> Damn it. You had it. Now you don't. 
<laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for joining us on today's episode of Hey Man. We love you guys. Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. It's Jake Wolf on uh, TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Come see us. We're in San Jose this weekend. And uh, dates for the rest of the year for not a lot of November, but most of December. I think every weekend in December almost. So come see us. Come have a good time. Thank you for listening as always. And hey, do something nice for someone today. Tell someone you love them. We love you guys. See you, everybody.